So we have the pleasure today to have a, a guest speaker with us. This is uh, Dr. Thomas Idikula. He is uh, the president of uh, Agape Partners International, uh, which dedicates itself to families all around the world, uh, basically through education and counseling and training, consultation. So he deals a lot with uh, issues of marriages and, you know, children, teenagers, uh, just pro issues that, that, that human beings f face. Um, he and his family, they uh, live in Boston, U.S., and they attend the Indian Pentecostal Assembly of Boston. Um, he's also working in, he's got a dual role in his work. Uh, he works as the director for mental health evaluation uh, department in the McLean Hospital. He also serves as a lecturer in the um, Department of Psychiatry in Harvard Medical School in the, in the USA. So let's put our hands together and welcome Dr. Thomas Idikula. Would you please join me? And let's just take a moment to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for bringing our brother to us today with your word in his heart, Father, that you have spoken to him. And I pray now use him as a vessel in your hand, Father, to deliver that message that you have poured into his heart. And Lord, I pray we will be receptive, that we will be attentive. And Lord, let the word of God come not only with, Lord, just as a word, but with power and conviction of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Good morning. This morning, it is my pleasure to be with you in Kuwait. Uh, I started my mission trip a few days back to India, the way back to U.S. I always take a turn and uh, spend a few days here in Kuwait for the past five years. And I noticed that it was God's plan and purpose in my life to fulfill the Great Commission. This morning, I'd like to recognize Pastor Shari for having me here, and also recognize Pastor Gerard Goldberg, the senior pastor of this church, and good to see uh, Brother Robin. He was one of our guest speakers for the retreat last year in our church. It was a surprise, and um, this morning I'm very excited to see this is the glimpse of heaven, right? As in uh, Revelation we read, when we go to heaven, you can see people from all race, all color, all groups and nationalities. And we are practicing it here, praise God. Thus, this morning I have, I'm prayerfully uh, trying to communicate with you how we can confirm our calling and election so that we will have a stable life. Not only that, we'll get a rich welcome to heaven. That's a big journey. Let's turn to the word of God, which is the passage is taken from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's amazing. We are living in a world which is very unstable. Jesus, or the Peter, the author of this letter, is admonishing how we can have a stable life. When you look at Christian life, one side it is challenging, other side it is rewarding. Can you say amen? amen? For example, the first challenge is growing in Christian faith. That itself is rewarding, but it is challenging. Leading a happy family life, that's the greatest challenge, but it is rewarding too. Enjoying the church and the fellowship, look at how beautiful it is. But there's a lot of work behind the scene, even for the pastors as well as for the believers. Again, the ultimate call is fulfilling the Great Commission. 
Until then, the work is incomplete. This morning, there's the four words I like to read and state here is faith, family, fellowship, and the Great Commission. When you hear the word of God, from a psychological perspective, I agree with what Jesus said. Four things can happen. For some people, there is kind of no clue. It's kind of a clueless heart. It's not getting there. Their heart is on the street side. The birds came and eat, and quickly, therefore, the word planted is gone. The second condition of the heart, rocky heart, they are rootless. They have taken the word with a lot of excitement, but it's gone. The third condition is the thorny heart. Because of the pains of this world, they are fruitless. But you can see another one, the good heart. The seeds fell on the good soil that produced 30, 60, 90 or 100. 100. They are the fruitful heart. Thus examine yourself as you are hearing the word of God, whether your heart condition this morning is clueless, rootless, fruitless or fruitful. That makes a big difference. The Bible is very clear. Because it starts with a calling. And this calling is confirmed by the covenant relationship with our master. Our God operates in certain way. His attribute, when you look at the attribute of God, you can find four basic attributes. How God operates. The first one is, our God is a covenant keeping God. In the Old Testament, with the people of Israel, he proved it. In the New Testament, with the church of God, he is still proving it. And the same admonition is given for couples in the marriage to have a covenant relationship. Thus, that is an attribute of God. Thus, our calling also is based on the covenant relationship with our Creator. And how it works in our life is through grace and love. And it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Finally, you can experience the true intimacy with the Master. Thus, there is a process. We are living in a world where many, many people are unstable. The word stable versus unstable. In psychology, the parallel word is normal versus abnormal. Simple, right? The most recent statistics by WHO shows that every fifth person in the world has some kind of abnormality, which means close to 1.1 billion people are going through some kind of unstable situation. That's a big number. If you look at the statistics, in 2018, close to 1 million people took their life. 1 million. In the United States alone, it is close to 45,000 people. If you look at the number of people who attempted, it may be five times more. Then in addition to that, people who are addicted to drugs, alcohol, and all kinds of psychiatric hospitalization, this is just the unstable level. Then in addition to that, we can look at the number of people who are going through separation, divorces, parent-child conflicts, that shows the kind of instability in this world. Thus, the first and the foremost thing to correct this instability, Peter is admonishing in this verse, confirm your calling. Confirm your salvation. Confirm whether you are justified. Confirm you are sanctified. Confirm your faith whether you are in Christ. In Paul's language, in Romans chapter 12, he put a different perspective. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. When the word of God is planted in your hearts, renew and allow the transformation to take place. Does the physical person, medicines can help. For the mind, the psychology can help. But for the spirit, it is the word of God and the Holy Spirit. 
when the word of god and the holy spirit is working together it has the power over mind body and the soul when jesus had been asked by an expert in law which is the greatest commandment in the bible jesus precisely responded love your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength and all your spirit this is the first and the greatest commandment the second one is love your neighbor as yourself many times we forget some of the second part of the verses we use love your neighbor but we need to love your neighbor as yourself even when we follow god when we worship god first we must deny ourselves that there is a prerequisites then only this sacrifice will be acceptable before god to confirm our family to confirm our for, uh, for a stable life the most important thing is stabilize your relationship with god align your covenant with god that is the foundation that holds your family that holds your faith that holds your mind body and the soul the immediate neighbor many times people have a confusion we learn from the samaritans good samaritan story jesus precisely mentioned who is your neighbor i do not know in kuwait in united states if someone ask you who is your neighbor it's it's very confusing people don't communicate because even though there are people next to you you have no idea sometimes who is your neighbor because it's it's a different community this morning if god ask you who is your neighbor may have some confusion is it your best friend is it your church member is it your colleague let me tell you the best friend and neighbor even you are staying in a home it is your spouse or it's your children that's the first lab that i see in the community is your own spouse if you can love your spouse as yourself what a stable home it will be same thing with when you start loving your children your parents and the extending our church members how stable it will be and also when you worship god in spirit and truth how stable it will be our relationship with god then you go to the next level which is the righteousness of god will be released in your life that will provide you the true character transformation that the calling that leads to the character which has the power to power for a compassionate ministry for example the character is rooted in it is evidenced by the fruit of the holy spirit which is the transformed self the self is so complicated no one can understand in the old testament the word heart is used psychology used the word self thus developing a servanthood attitude is the whole focus here if you look at the second biggest act in the bible by the lord jesus christ is jesus washing the disciples feet can you imagine the king of kings lord of lords is washing the ugly feet of the disciples it's amazing his love why and who you are this morning in the presence of god let me tell you there is another verse in the bible how beautiful is the feet of those who bring good news when i was a sunday school student i confused i thought it is a typo because in those days people mostly did not have shoes and also they have to walk miles and miles through mountains and valleys to bring forth this good news but the holy spirit is not looking at the face of the person but looking at this feet and saluting that how beautiful is the feet of those who bring good news how much time and effort we used to decorate ourselves for our physical appearance but god is concerned about your heart god is concerned about your feet this morning the head heart and hands is very important for a stable life 
our herd is our orthodoxy, which is ortho means right, doxy means belief. What is your covenant in your head? What is your calling that is in your head? How the word of God is transforming your faith, that happens in the head. Then come to the heart condition, which is the character. Whether we are transformed to the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we are in Christ, you can feel it. When the head is our belief and thought process, our heart is our feelings and our emotions, which is so real. We cannot pretend. In the head, we can have all kinds of faulty thoughts, but let me tell you, the heart is very difficult to pretend, which is a more spontaneous response of the mind. That leads to the hands and the feet, the three edge, which is the orthopraxy, which is right practice, right behavior, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This morning to stable your life, to reduce the stress, there needs to be a correlation between the head, heart and the hands. The head represents your belief system, your thought process. Your heart represents your emotions and the feelings. And your hands represents the outcome, that is your behavior, your actions, which is so visible. The thoughts and the emotions, nobody can understand other than you and God. But when there is an agreement between head, heart and hands, you will be the most stable person. The cause of many psychiatric problems, when I look at it, there is an imbalance between head, heart and hands. For example, you know the mystery of God's love. You know everything about the Bible, but you don't feel it in your heart. Or you are not able to worship God in spirit and truth. There is a disconnect. Sometimes you have in head and heart, but you are not able to get into the practical level. That is also a problem. When I look at most Christians, most of them do have a big head, a small heart with no hands. Can you imagine that? Big head with a lot of information, fully loaded. But at the heart level, 50-50. Hands level, practical level, very little. That shows how vulnerable we are. How malnutritious we are. Not because we don't have the information or resources. That's converting into our transformation, which is the heart through faith and obedience. Thus, the next one is, what is more important to understand is, this is the test of our character. There are four T's that will test your character. Every person has to go through this test in our Christian life. First one is trial, which is from God. Not from the devil, not from the friends or families, which is from God. Example, in the Bible you can see Joseph, Daniel, that is to bring closer to God. Right? Not to destroy you. Then temptations you can see, which is from the devil. The focus is very clear, the, to destroy you. The only two things you can do is resist or run away from that place. There is no other option. The third one is trespass. This is not from God, not from the devil, from maybe immediate family members, maybe from your spouse, from the parents, from the children, maybe from the church members, colleague. It can be any human being. What we have to do? Forgive, forgive. There is no other remedy for that. The last one is troubles. Again, that is not from God, not from the devil, not from any other human being other than ourselves. When we make mistakes, when, when we hurt other people, all we can do is confess before God. I'm sorry. God will accept you. Thus, this morning you have to look at the type of affliction, the instability or the kind of disorder that we have. Is it because of a trial? Then trust in the Lord. Pray to God. Hang around with the right people who cares for you, who prays for you. And if you are going through the temptations, which we are all going through these temptations in life, 
They will have a vested interest to destroy families, Christians. And we need one another. We need to support one another. But the technique and the method is given. Either you resist the devil or when you are incapable to do that, run away from that place. And the third one, people may take your, your ownership, your privileges, your inheritance. We have a tendency to fight back, especially when you are capable. Jesus made it very clear, not seven times, 490 times. Don't count. The purpose here is unconditional love. Forgive it, practicing it from family. Then go to the higher level in circles. Then you will have the most stable life in this world. And also, when you have trouble, when you make mistakes consciously or unconsciously, we must confess. We must confess that before God and one another. The next one I like to bring here is our competency. Bible makes it very clear that our competency comes from God. It is the function of the Holy Spirit. That is what you know. Being good at what you do. Leading with anointing of the Holy Spirit. Empowered and directed by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Competency means how we can empower another Christian, another person, and bring them closer to God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Is it amazing? We are living in a world, a lot of people are discouraged. That is one of the reasons that people are unstable. People are isolated, lonely, depressed, and anxious because they are not empowered. They are not encouraged. They are not accepted by people within the family, within the community. That's one of the reasons of the mental health situations, the instability. We read in the Bible, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but God has given you something, spirit of power, spirit of love, and spirit of sound mind. That attack the core of every fear and instability. The root cause of many mental health situations, when you look at, even in psychology, it is the irrational fear. This irrational fear takes control of your power and make you a weak person. Then the next level is that will enable you to make others, uh, more, you make you delusional, which means you think you are not the problem, others are the problem, which means a form of hatred or kind of a, a detachment. And you become secluded and isolated, finally insulated. And people get so mad, bad, and sad. I don't know what else to add. <laughs> that leads to out of control. The words, if you meditate that thing, this fear can cause a lot of troubles in life. The first one is physical weakness and mental weakness. You have no motivation. You want to lie down. You don't feel doing anything. No motivation. Devil scheme. The second one is hatred. You hate your, your own family members, your own close friends, because you are controlled by a delusion, a false belief by this fear. The third one is you have no self-control, no sound mind. Then now look at the meditate, meditate this verse. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he has given you spirit of power. Spirit of love and spirit of self-control or sound mind. How powerful this competency. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. And we have to practice in our personal life, in our family life, as well as people who are weak, those who are living in fear, or those who are out of control. We need to be competent to help others. Helping people to help themselves. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, there is a purpose for equipping you for a stable life. To fulfilling the great commission. When you look at the calling, it is obedience to the great commandments. But when you look at the proclamation of the gospel, the three things what I shared is a prerequisite. Without fulfilling the great commandments, I doubt whether we can fulfill 
the great commission it is highly correlated because the great commandments as i said earlier first is loving god wholeheartedly but and also loving people without loving god and loving people how you can take this gospel because you have to believe that gospel is the power of god to transform people that needs compassion and the holy spirit anointing thus until you are obedient to the great commandments you won't able to experience the love the grace the favor of god with the power of the holy spirit to fulfill the great commission many people have the desire to take this great commission even when jesus trained his disciples for 3 years i consider the first three parts of it which is yes confirming their calling confirming their covenant relationship to obey christ obey his word that leads into a compassionate ministry but finally jesus admonished them wait for the power from above then you shall be my witness thus there is a prerequisite to fulfill the great commission great commission is the proclamation of the gospel but the great commandments is the re in reincarnation of christ in our life so that those who see not only hear our voice they will see our character our compassion our life they can see christ in us when the holy spirit work as well as done in the compassionate way what is happening is you are fulfilling the great commission it just happens your word becomes powerful nobody can stand before you because christ is working in you this morning love the lord with all your heart love your neighbor as yourself then you can take that calling the greatest calling is not receiving christ but speaking about christ and bringing at least one person to christ imagine you are going to heaven with no souls at least have a minimum one that is more than the cost of the whole world more than your 30 years of work all the bank balance all the family accomplishment added is greater than the value of one soul is it amazing one soul how we have to confirm our calling second we need to allow the transformation to take place that is our character and third one is our competency which comes from the holy spirit and finally the great commission this morning are you encouraged in your spirit this four words psychologists believe that people cannot remember more than three words in a message this morning i cannot forget the fourth one which is the great commission when i look at the logo of the church i see something exactly what i am seeing in my message this morning a church this church when i look at the logo clearly mentioned it is bible based our calling needs to be bible based when i look at the character yes jesus focused when i look at the competency which is the holy spirit based but great commission is our target the three things are put together to produce something bringing people to christ that is the ultimate call i'm so excited when i whenever i come to kuwait a lot of people sunday morning or friday morning here worshiping god even though they are part of different groups they are all worshiping one god we should be thankful to that many nations don't have this privilege many people are suffering we have the freedom to worship god thus for a stable life we need to reiterate these four things i will conclude this with one more level i will go the next flight that is how we can go deeper through one person his name is daniel he was a professional at the same time he was a man of prayer man of man of principle man of prophecy man of integrity verse chapter 1 verse 8 clearly says he resolved not to defile with things of this world 
That is the first secret. In your personal life, when temptations come, how we can have a stable life? The people, many people, even though have a stable life, when temptation comes, people yield. Because the flesh is weak and the spirit is strong. When you yield to the flesh, what happens? We lose the battle. Thus, the, some of the characters that we find in the Bible, Daniel and Joseph, I just want to summarize here with jo Daniel. Daniel is a successful person. He had all the temptations and difficulties. These days, we may not have temptations of food. I don't think so. Because I shared this 10 years back to a youth group. Dr. Nikola, what are you talking? Temptations of food? That's an outdated story. I said, well, take it out. What about temptations of internet? Yeah, yeah, that we can relate to it. Thus, after that, I'm not using the word internet or food or anything. Appetite. It includes everything. Some people it can be alcohol, some people it can be drugs, some people it can be sex, all kinds, some people it can be money, all sorts of things. That is inappropriate, lustful desire of our flesh. That is the first thing that we have to resolve that will prepare you for a stable life. And Daniel was successful. He gone through that test. The second test that we have read, uh, read in um, Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, uh, verse 17 is, Daniel was special. When you look at Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, all these people, they all have special wisdom, right? But Daniel got something special. That is, he has the discernment to interpret visions. That is the Holy Spirit anointing. In addition to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we need the Holy Spirit anointing for a stable life. The first one is we need to be transformed by resisting every temptation that is approaching us every second. That is level one. Level two, we can't just go with our experiences and knowledge or even wisdom. There are limitations. The, the story of Daniel teaches us that Daniel forgotten the dream. But in psychology, I'm trained to interpret dreams, but no university has taught me how to bring forth a forgotten dream. No way. Humanly impossible. That's why Daniel has been brought into the situation. Even Daniel himself said, I don't know. He requested a few days from the king to wait before God and receive that forgotten dream. He was successful. God granted him. That's what I'm trying to say. There are dead end ends in life. None of our learned techniques will work. The friends cannot help. Many things that you depend on normally may help you. It is like a Jabok experience. You, if you go backward, Laban will kill you. If you forward, brother will come and kill you. And both sides, wild animals. The only place to look at is upward. That is where life and the situation works. I decided to call upon the Lord. His name changed. Now on, not Jacob, Israel. A branded name. Now on, your family name changed to become a nation. And through that, Jesus is going to come. That's the goal that we look at in this generation when I look at it. We have to present Christ through our pains and problems. That's why it's been brought into the situation. I will conclude with this last part, that is chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. It's very interesting. Three responses of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Thus, that trial will continue sometimes. Even though you think that, you know, level one, level two, first one is a physical test. Second one is more kind of a spiritual test. Now, this is a real practical test. They are brought for a, before a fiery furnace. That's the toughest one because you can see the fire. You are sitting next to the king. But the verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Do you have any idea this is a hopeless situation? Because if they defend this matter before the king, there is no mercy. My under, the way I'm understanding this verse is, 
this three men knows very well this king. Okay? The only way to get out from this problem is they have to pretend they are worshipping this idol. Then king may protect because king has some affection towards this smart three boys. Thus, but this young people decided, thank you. In America, thank you means yeah, I don't need your help. Which means kind of a hopeless situation. The mind, the way it works, first one is the emotional response, which means you can't help me, I have no help, I'm done. Especially when you have accidents or sickness or terminal thing, that's the first thing. How many of you can say praise the Lord when you have a bad thing happen? Then you are an angel. Most people feel very miserable, very bitter. Looks like the whole world is collapsing. I think they are very anxious at that point. But second level, when you is a rational response, an intellectual response in verse 17. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to help us, deliver us. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. That is a direct hit to the king. I don't need your help. My God will help. But the problem is it is not proven. It is an intellectual belief. We all have, when you go for praying for sick people, we wholeheartedly pray. Nothing wrong with that. But we know for sure that it is in God's hand. Even though we believe it, 100% days, we cannot claim it. It is the work of God. But verse 18 clearly can see a spiritual response. That is, even if the first level is, I would say, put zero which means not much hope. King cannot help them. And the second level is 100% deliverance. And the third one, what we are seeing is 50-50. Even if our God does not help us, we want you to know, your majesty, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. That is a clear-cut message. We are not going to bend our knees before this idol no matter what. That is, they are not saying that they will be protected, they are physically saved, they are willing to offer a sacrifice there for their faith. I call that is a genuine faith. The ultimate test. Even if I lose my visa, even if I lose my job, even, I, even if I lose my health, I am not going to bow down before this. Because my faith, my God is bigger than all these things combined. That is true Christian faith. It is not conditional. Our God's love is unconditional. Our faith needs to be unconditional before God. In our mind, we may have emotional response in the morning. By evening, you may have a rational. But before you go to bed, develop a spiritual, genuine faith. It's all right to have emotional transactions going in your heart. But make sure that you come to the rational level. I consider that is a biblical understanding of the situation. But you need the Holy Spirit anointing to understand the big picture. Thus you sequentially build this form of thought process from an emotional level to a mental level, rational level to a spiritual level. That is how you develop a stable life. These three men, when you look at, they become the most stable people in the fiery furnace. It is not the environment that controls these people because a fourth person emerged in that fiery furnace. He adjusted the thermostat to the air condition level. I don't think that these young men were able to see this king, his, uh, Jesus, but the wicked king, Nebuchadnezzar, was able to see the fourth person. A transformation took place in his heart. He accepted the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He changed the law of the Lord. That is great commission. When we go through afflictions and problems, don't underestimate that God has a plan through you and through your generation. Christ needs to come. That has been fulfilled. In summary, why we are here in this world. That is the first step to confirm our calling. And 
you have to have a missional heart. By allowing this transformation, allowing this transformation of your character, receiving the Holy Spirit to proclaiming this gospel on a compassionate way and a powerful way. This morning, I want to pray for you. How many of you want to take these four things in your life? Next slide. That is, I want to confirm my calling. I want to confirm my election. I'm looking for a stable life. I'm looking for a rich welcome. In simple words, that is what Jesus offered, an abundant life, an eternal life, a rich welcome. Don't walk away from this. The most powerful invitation that is given for a rich welcome for eternity. This is the only way to come and to receive this greatest invitation is confirm your calling. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk in obedience to the truth that is loving God and loving the people. Filled with the Holy Spirit and do everything that is commanded. You will never be the same. Some of the issues and challenges that you are facing today, let me tell you, when you go through the valley of shadow of death, he will hold you. He not only hold you, he will be with you. And Christ will be formed in our heart. Our mind, our body, and the soul will be transformed to his likeness. You can experience the true love of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can experience the true grace in your life. You experience the favor of God in all situations. Not only that, you experience the power of God in your life. Not only that, one day experience the glory of God. I will repeat that. When you have a stable life, uh, you will experience the ultimate love of God in your life. The grace of God in your life. The favor of God in your life. And the power of God. Finally, finally, the glory of God revealed in your personal life, family life, and the ministry. Why can't we all stand and commit our life before God? And ask Jesus to come in your heart. As I pray, this is the time not to look around, not just to examine your life. I am confirmed about the calling. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise the Lord for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for this divine covenant and commit appointment with God's people in this place. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. Lord, you confirm your calling in the hearts and minds of your people in this area. Allow the transformation of our character, Lord. Lord Jesus, let our competency be according to the spirit of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord Jesus, help us to fulfill the great commission in our life. Anoint the young people. Anoint the parents. Anoint the couples and the servants of God. Send with your peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.